Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show. Thank you so much for watching every day, Monday through Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. Central, as I get to ride home with you in the afternoon. You can find us on the radio at icradio.media. You can also download the apps. makes it a little easier. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundance Television, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. And don't forget the podcast. It's a fun one, and you get lots of great information it's always the truth fantastic talk show hosts are associated with the newscaster um murray edwards is associated with that a lot of folks know murray he's been in alabama politics for a real long time so um he was watching the show one day and he said you know what you need to be on the podcast and i said no way and he said yeah yeah way we're going to make it happen so anyway it's a lot of fun get a lot of fun with victoria by the way he's from california john merrill is with me right now as our former alabama secretary of state and i miss you john i mean i really do i wish you were back but Thank anyway it's great. i appreciate that but i'll tell you i always enjoy being on the air with you from time to time as often as your schedule permits and it's always a uh, a real blessing for me to interact with you, but always more so in person than virtually. Yeah, I'd rather do person too. Now you are, of course, now you're with a, a big engineering firm, Wagner Engineering, and um, I'll tell you what, they're a, they're a great establishment. Well, you're very kind, and I was just talking to some clients today about some projects that we're working on, some water and sewer projects, some wastewater treatment projects, road and bridge projects as well as park design and development projects and long-range planning projects that we're working on all across the great state of alabama as we continue to expand our footprint and of course as you know i continue to travel all over alabama trying mm -hmm. to spread the word about wagner and what wagner can do of course we have 19 offices in six states in the southeastern united states but my goal, of course, is to visit with all 67 counties at least one time a year and to be able to do so in a way that enables those folks to know what services we can provide and how we can be helpful to their community. Since January the 1st of this year, I've been to 28 counties for 89 unique visits so far. That's awesome. You know, a, a small town, the, they want to grow, but they don't know where to start. You know, what do you, what's the number one thing issue you may have, but you can counsel with people and get them started on the right road. What would be the first thing you would ask? Well, the first thing that we try to do is to make sure that we know what the needs are in that particular community. It's one thing to go in there and try to sell your services, but the most important thing is to make sure that you know where the community is and what the community's needs are. Because mm -hmm. if you're just going in there with a portfolio and you say, we can sell this to you because we can do this for you, that doesn't mean as much to them as you find out what their needs are and why they got to this point. And once you understand why they got to this point, then hopefully you can help them develop a plan that will help them be able to accomplish their goals for their community, because that's what it's all about. Absolutely. And, and I like the way you work. Uh, and, and I've noticed from knowing you all these years, you do a lot of listening. And you know what questions to ask and, and then folks can go on ahead and, you, and, and then you can start at that point. What do they really need? Well, Don, I think it's very important to make sure that you do listen. And if you want to be an outstanding per public servant, I think you need to be an outstanding listener. I think that's first and foremost. That's if you're working for somebody in a public position as an elected official or as a servant of the people, as what people would call career bureaucrats, or if you're working in the private sector, you're trying to meet the needs of your clients and you're trying to make sure that they have what they need in order to make sure that they can meet the needs of the people they're attempting to serve. Spot on. I mean, that's true. So let me ask you a question, too, because times have changed. Towns and cities aren't like they used to be uh, because we have, you know, we have all the electronics and we have Internet. We have all these wonderful things that we can work with. What are you seeing that people are actually asking for? What are they trying to grow to be, so to speak? Well, I think in many communities, what they're trying to do is just to accentuate the positive things that they have where they live. You know, I think a lot of Alabamians are reluctant to have their community grow because we grow comfortable with where we are. 
And we want to make sure that we maintain the quality of life that we've enjoyed and that our families have enjoyed. But those visionary communities are the ones that will find a way to keep that small town flavor as they continue to grow and they continue to try to expand so they can offer more services and a greater quality of life for the people that live in their community. If you notice the list of the 10 fastest growing communities in the state of Alabama over the last year, you'll notice that three of those communities are communities that have a population of less than 20,000 people in those counties. And that's because people want to go to get that Mayberry type environment. They want to make sure that they are raising their children in an environment that is wholesome, that is fresh, that has a good education system, that has good roads, that has a high quality of life with features that are there and not necessarily in that community, but within about a 30 minute drive of where they are. That's why you're seeing growth in places like Limestone County and Cleburne County and Randolph County all around the state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the hometown feel, but I also like conveniences of the big city as well. So where we live in DeKalb County, we are just we're kind of right in the center of everything. You know, we've got Gadsden growing like gangbusters. And then we've got other areas. You've got Chattanooga and Birmingham and all those places are right there. So if, if I kind of miss the big city of Charlotte, sometimes Phil will say, let's just go to Chattanooga. Or let's go to Gaston, you know. And right. so we've got the best of all worlds. You've got the beauty, which also attracts companies. And I would think that's probably a big thing on the list. How many companies can you attract? Well, but you also have to remember that you have to have people to work in these companies. And so there has to be a well-educated workforce. So those people are going to be able to meet the needs of their company as far as producing their product or delivering their service. They have to have high quality trained personnel that live within a driving distance so that they can work at these sites. And that's very important to their success. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, we've got the colleges around here for that. Um, Gadsden State has an awesome facility there. Um, Northeast Sneed. There's lots of if you're willing to be trained and you can, you can have a long career um, working for someone, maybe as an apprentice to get started. I can't think of a better way, John. I could work as a you, know, you hit the nail program. right on the head, Donna, because those community colleges and Northeast Community College, which is in your county of DeKalb, those community colleges are focusing on having a trained workforce that will enable those individuals. That's somebody calling right now looking for a job. We want to make sure that those people know that they're going to have an opportunity to work in a competitive environment with a competitive salary and competitive wage that will enable them to do what they want to do and live in the kind of life that they want to live right now and in the future. Absolutely. You know, and there are jobs out there, women used to do these jobs, you know, but, but because of technology and because of the training you can get, there are women who are, they can actually drill pressers. They can be, I mean, working all kinds of these great jobs and not have the big college debt behind them. Absolutely. And those jobs are not restricted to males. As you said, they're, only restricted to people who have limited minds and limited imaginations. Because when people want to make a difference in their community, as long as they're trained, educated and trained and willing to demonstrate that they are competent workers who are interested in doing a good job, being there on time, giving a full day's work for a full day's pay, there's going to be unlimited opportunity in our state. Oh, absolutely. Um, Sherry Cagle is a friend of mine who lives in Oxford, Alabama. And I thought it was interesting. Sherry's dad owned a, uh, a company. I'm telling you, it was like welding. And none of the sons were interested, but Sherry was. And she's used a woman's point of view. Very successful. He turned the company over to her. And she's doing wow. such a great, great job. Now, she continues ongoing training because, you know, and you have to in these days. Um, because of technology, you know, and it's made life a lot easier for a lot of those welders as well. hundred percent, hundred percent. And I'm so excited about all the things that are available out there as well. I wanted to talk about Wagner engineering and, and I'm on your website right now. It's Wagner ENG 
com, and you really need to check it out. Um, whether you're looking for a job or you're looking for a company, um, we'd like to relocate anywhere in Alabama. We'd love to have you. But you guys also, you're out there in the community. Uh, I'm seeing all kinds of things that you guys have been associated with. Um, helping, you're giving back big time to the communities. Well, it's a bigger part of the culture of our company is to find a way to contribute where you're planted and to make sure that if you're in Jackson or if you're in Columbus or if you're in Tupelo or if you're in Biloxi or anywhere over in the Mississippi area where our offices are, or if you're in Baton Rouge or New Orleans, if you're in Birmingham, if you're in Tennessee, if you're in Arkansas, I mean, we have 19 offices in six states and we want to be a community leader and a community contributor wherever we are. And I wanted to ask you a question too. Is I, I know uh, Phil and I used to own a Snelling personnel services back in the 1980s and I loved it. I mean, we had a blast with that company, but now this was back in the days where there were no jobs right? and lots of folks looking for jobs. That's and right. so folks were just kind of having to settle. But now it's just wide open. I mean, there are jobs everywhere. If I, if I were a young person, I'd hold down two of them right now and have a house paid off in a year. You could do that. That would sure. be viable. It, absolutely, you could. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. So about folks uh, on the job interview, because we have the Internet now. We didn't have back in my day. You can actually do a little research about a company before you go on a job interview. And, Not only uh, that, that no, a no, lot. you should do those research opportunities before you go to a job interview so you know what that company is all about and what that company is offering and if you are a part of the community culture that that particular company possesses and if you have the desire to be a part of that community culture then it puts you in a stronger position to be more effective in your interview and to have the opportunity for greater success when your interview is completed Absolutely. John, half the show's over. We're going to have to go into a commercial break. I hate this. <laughs> no, we've got some fantastic sponsors and I'm always glad to parade them as well. Let's go into a break. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Queen City East Car Sales has been serving drivers in the Northeast Alabama area for years with a quality selection of late model used cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks. On top of our extensive selection and competitive prices, we offer professional auto financing services for used car buyers of all credit levels. Whether you've just begun your search or you're ready to secure your next vehicle, at Twin City Used Car Sales, you will drive away with the vehicle of your dreams. The sales and finance staff at Twin City Used Car Sales looks forward to serving you, and you can apply for financing online before your visit to our used dealership in Gadsden, Alabama. Check us out on the web at TwinCityUsedCars.com or go by our location at 901 First Avenue, Gadsden, Alabama. We sincerely look forward to serving you. At Limon's Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to limonsmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Limon's you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Limon's Mexican Restaurant. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. 
If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need, toys at Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blount Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018. Are you ready? We all wonder what tomorrow will bring, but the future lays itself at the feet of the prepared and surrenders to the will of the persistent. It's not easy, but today shapes you so you can shape tomorrow. With Northeast Alabama Community College, when the future asks if you're ready, you can answer. Yes. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community College. Good afternoon. We are back. Thank you so much for watching Donna's Edge Talk Show. We are here to serve you. So whatever you're looking for shows you would like me to do a little research. Um, I'm in my studio right now. This is only some of my books. I have this huge library. I was the geek and nerd in school. I'm still geeky. I'm still nerdy. So if you would love for me to do some research, I'll be glad to do that for you. And any topics you would like for me to cover, I'll be glad to do that for you as well. As a matter of fact, John, you're covering some of those topics that are being asked. And that's about small towns. You know, how do I start with a company? If I'm a company, what do I need to be looking for an employee? But also if I'm a company and I'm thinking about, you know, just going into a particular area, especially Alabama, we want you here. Why should folks move to Alabama and start a company? Well, Alabama is a great land of opportunity. It's an area that is ripe for growth for any industry whatsoever. As a matter of fact, when you think about it for a minute, Donna, 30 years ago, Alabama had absolutely no presence whatsoever in the automotive industry. And today we're one of the automotive industry leaders in the world, not just in the United States. You know, so, a big part of that. Go ahead. No, no, no. Very important to make sure that if you are opening yourself up for that, that you have to ensure that when those people come here, they have quality people that can work for them. And mm-hmm. that's what we've committed to doing is to providing a quality workforce through the secondary education system, which would be high schools and the post-secondary system which is through our community college system and then the higher education system in the state where people are trained to be able to go into these jobs through the Alabama industrial development training program and to be able to build 
automobiles or to be able to paint automobiles or to build the engines that go in automobiles. All of these things are so very important and you have to have a qualified and trained workforce in order to make sure that you're able to provide those folks that will actually do the work for the people that you're trying to recruit. And when you can accomplish that, you'll see exponential growth occur. And that's what Alabama has seen over the last 30 years in the automotive industry and in so many other industries, whether it's the aircraft industry with Airbus down in Mobile, uh, where we've also got Austell, which is a ship builder, uh, one of the largest auto, uh, uh, air aviator supply mm -hmm. industries in the world, as well as one of the largest shipbuilding operations in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, something else folks need to be thinking about. So when Honda came in, well, a, a lot of companies were just pop. A lot of companies were actually developed and put on the map because of the Honda company. Yes, they were. And you've seen growth occur, not just in Lincoln, where Honda's located, but also in Oxford, in Heflin, in Pell City, all around the area, the surrounding area where the Honda plant is located in Talladega County in Lincoln. And the benefit is it's more than just that particular municipality or that particular county where it's established. People have to realize that in today's economy, we're eliminating those artificial walls and artificial boundaries that we put up before, which include, but are not limited to county lines, municipal boundary, municipal lines. What we want to do is to make sure people know that people will go to work wherever the job is and when we allow them to be able to do that, you'll see everybody have an opportunity to grow and to develop, not just that particular community. Right. You know, we even have a company here in Boaz who is a supplier to the Honda company. So, I mean, it really, there are no boundaries. I mean, if you've got the product out there and you've got good workers, and they're going to get that product out there. You'll, you'll thrive. I well, mean, there's no doubt. Like yeah, just like they said in the Field of Dreams movie, if you build it, they will come. And True. if you build the plant, those people will come. And that's what we've seen since we've become an automotive leader in the world. Absolutely. You know, uh, let's talk a little bit about agriculture, too, because um, in addition to being a business owner and um, this show, I'm also a farmer. And I love farming. And there are grants out there available that I never knew about. Um, Congressman Adderholt has been just huge supporter. And, um, you know, to point you in the right direction and tell you where to go. Well, and let me tell you, we are so, so fortunate to have Congressman Adderholt in office. And, of course, he will start his 14th term in January of 2025. But he will be the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, the first Alabamian to be in that role. And we should be very, very proud of him and all he's been able to do for our state and all he'll continue to do for our state. But we should never forget that agriculture is the number one industry in the state of Alabama. And so we have to make sure we continue to promote agriculture, not just in our communities, but especially in our schools. So young people will continue to be interested in agriculture and want to continue to develop property, to grow uh, products, whether it be groceries that you would find in fruits and vegetables, cattle, um, any other kinds of products that are necessary in order to produce food that we enjoy, whether it's uh, wheat, cotton, soybeans, all of those things are so very important. And Alabama remains an agricultural state. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it's, John, you and Cindy are going to have to come over to the house and let me cook you a steak. We have a farmer that we buy meat from, the, the cow. And I'm gonna, it's the best. I mean, it's grass-fed, no hormones, nothing like that. The best meat. And it keeps her a really long time in the freezer as well. So support your local farmer. And go to, you know, seek them out and, and you'll, it'll be a neighbor. It'll be somebody that you can trust as well. And Absolutely. so, yeah, all kinds of things. 
you know something I didn't know in the black belt, but that they're, they're huge on catfish down there. I, I didn't know that. Yes, they are. It's a whole industry and it's all part of our agricultural industry mm -hmm. and families are supported by that industry. People that work there as well as people that own the company, but there are many, many jobs that are directly related to catfish farming in the state of Alabama and some of the largest catfish, uh, catfish producers in the nation are located in Hale and Greene County, Alabama. That's amazing that we've got that just right down the road. And we need to support those folks. I mean, big time and, and so many things. Let's talk a little bit about retail. We only, ha we only have about, about four minutes left in this segment. But retail, that's booming in Gadsden. Yes, it is. And, you know, they've done a remarkable job up there of making sure that they're recruiting businesses that complement existing businesses as opposed to recruiting businesses that will be competing against existing businesses. Because one of the things that existing business gets concerned about is when you see growth coming, how is that going to impact me and what we're doing? But when they can see that growth occurring in a complementary fashion, almost like adding peanut butter to jelly, as opposed to trying to find a way to replace a particular company, it means a lot more to those folks and they're open to that growth and they're open to that development and that maturation in their own community. You know, so the folks are afraid of competition and you should not be afraid of competition. Competition will help you grow. I mean, I welcome it because you can find it. It kind of helps you get off of, you know, sometimes we get inside that little box, you know, we're comfortable in there, but there's That's a right. lot of things you can do once you get out of that box. That's right. And that's why we have to be open to those new concepts, those new ideas and those new companies that are coming in so that they know that we're welcoming them because we want them to come not as competitors, but as people who are interested in trying to help the community grow just like you are. Well, I'm going to tell you what, there's a lady, one of my sponsors is Vintage 1889 in Fort Payne. And I know you've been there. Lynn Brewer is the owner of that company and she's with the city council and she's not a bit jealous of other restaurants. As a matter of fact, she goes out and supports them. And that's, the, I mean, I think that's the ultimate businesswoman right there. Absolutely. All supportive of all kinds of things, but sometimes you just kind of have to, and I think COVID helped us do this. You know, in COVID, we, we were all un, un, unaware, you know, what in the world is happening? We don't know how we're going to react to this. What's it going to do to the, to the business? But I saw a lot of people, restaurants especially, started their truck, you know, meals in trucks and that kind of thing. We have, in, we are strong. I mean, we can make things happen in Alabama. No we can doubt use it. about it. No doubt. Okay, one minute left in this segment, John. What would you like to say to people before you go? Well, we're always excited to talk to people about the services that we provide at Wagner Engineering. And if anybody within the sound of my voice today or that may be watching our program has any questions about what we can do to help them in their community, please feel free to reach out to me directly on my cell phone at 334-328-2787 or you can visit our website at wagnerenge.com. That's W-A-G-G-O-N-E-R-E-N-G, -G -E wagnerengineering.com. And we'll be happy to answer questions that you may have. We'll come visit you. We'll look at your projects or your programs, see what we can do to help you. And hopefully it'll be able to help us as well. Absolutely. And sometimes people just need to tweak something just a little bit. And you guys are masters at that, helping people find that solution. Again, John, thank you so much for being on the show today. Appreciate it. Donna, it's always great to be your guest. And thank you so much for watching Donna's Edge. Without you, we wouldn't have a show. So again, thank you for all the emails you're sending. Any suggestions? I'll be glad to do the research for you. You take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.